come to So True. Uh, today's devotional is entitled, Here Comes Trouble, and it's based on the text of 1 Kings 18, verses 16 through 18. I want to take time to read the text. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Then it happened when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said to him, Is that you, O troubler of Israel? And he said, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have, in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and have followed the Baals. Have you noticed recently that the good guys are now the bad guys? That Christianity is portrayed and ridiculed as being on the wrong side of history? That Christian views on salvation, marriage, and gender are not seen as merely false, but as dangerous opinions not to be considered, but censored? The times are changing. Christianity is no longer a friend of society, but a, an enemy. Only a few decades ago, Christianity had a favored status in the West. Christianity was the good guy, the solution to what was bad. Today, Christianity increasingly is viewed as the bad guy, the impediment to what is considered good by society. Christianity is in trouble because its rigid morality, its universal claims, its exclusive message of salvation and comprehensive worldview. While the status of being bad guys is something you in the West, Christians across the world and throughout history have always been known uh, and derided by the world. Study the Bible and church history and you will discover that God's people and God's preachers have often been cast as troublemakers and evildoers. Jesus told us in Matthew 5, 11 to 12, that indeed we would um, uh, be hated and persecuted by the world. If you go to 1 Peter, verses like chapter 2, 11 to 12, and chapter 3, 15 to 17, and chapter 4, 12 to 16, you're going to get this theme of suffering in the world because of one's righteousness, finding uh, one, uh, oneself an outsider rather than an insider. Ours is a world that likes to shoot the messenger. Faithful Amos was charged with conspiring against Jeroboam, king of Israel, and told that the land was not able to bear all his words, Amos 7.10. Wicked king Ahab, who had troubled Israel with his idolatry and alliance with Jezebel, nevertheless labeled and libeled the prophet Elijah as the troublemaker of Israel, 1 Kings 18, 17 to 18. We just read that text. It was said of Paul and Silas, after they brought freedom to a demonically enslaved girl, that they had exceedingly troubled the city. Acts 16, verse 20, and you can see a similar charge against Paul in Acts 17, 6 and 24, 5. Think about this. Even Christ himself was accused by the Jewish elites of perverting the nation. Luke 23, 2 and Luke 23, 5. Read your Bible and you will see that the good guys have often been cast as the bad guys. Outside of the Bible, a study of church history shows a similar pattern of good and godly people being scapegoated by a wicked world. Think about this. Under Nero, Christians were blamed for the burning of Rome and consequently set on fire as punishment. Tertullian, the church father, famously said, if the Tiber rises too high or the Nile too low, the cry is the Christian's to the lions. In opposition to Luther and the Protestant Reformation, Pope Leo X issued a papal bull entitled Arise, O Lord, in which he condemned Luther and called for the immediate restraint of this, quote, wild boar in God's vineyard. The times have changed in America and the West. But in another sense, times have not changed. The world hated Christ, and the world will hate those who preach Christ and look like him and replicate his character. Jesus told us about that in John 15, 18 to 25. In the midst of this emerging change, let us not change the gospel or our commitment to live unashamed of the gospel. Romans 1, 16 to 17. Remember, 
it is an honor to suffer shame for the name of the one who bore our shame. That's what the apostles talk about in Acts 5, 40 to 41. They count it a joy. They rejoiced to suffer for him who suffered for them. Remember, too, that there is coming a day when God will trouble those who trouble the church. 2 Thessalonians 1, verses 3 to 10. Look, as we wrap up, don't be troubled by being a troublemaker because we're not the ones in trouble. (laughs) 